This is Spencer with the MacGuffin, and today I'm joined with the creative force behind The Big Sick, which is premiere, or not premiere, it's the opening night film at CIF uh, 2017. We got Emily Gordon, Kumail Nanjiani, and Michael Showalter, um, respectively. Um, the one thing I wanted to get right into for me is just conceptually how a project yes, please, uh, like this comes together. I mean, it's not often that you have a film uh, that's based on a true story starring one of the people who experienced that story. Um, Michael, you're obviously an outside force joining into their story. And Emily, like, it's going to be kind of surreal because you're familiar with the events, but you're actually watching them now. Mm. Um, what is that process like for you all to try and come together and create a cohesive vision with all these different sort of perspectives of the same project. I think that's what makes the movie of something that I like and something I think is quite good. Hopefully other world people will too. Is that It is did, very good. Just well, let's get that right off the table. Uh, that we did bring all those perspectives. We all had yeah. uh, such different perspectives. Even the two of us had such different mm -hmm. perspectives of having gone through the event. And then everyone who came on had some sort of a, a some kind of personal resonance with the story then then brought their own stuff to it. But I think that's what makes it good is that it does have a lot of, uh, a lot of perspectives. Yeah. So, you know, there were certain characters that some people were more sort of the caretakers of, you know, so like, um, like, um, uh, and, and having that really like Mike actually weirdly was really about my family. Mike was always very insistent mm -hmm. from the beginning they were like this has to be a great family this has to feel like a really really good we family that works and works together and loves each other because he's like that's that's what will raise the stakes this can't be like a stern sort of Pakistani family that you've seen in other stuff so so Emily's right I think having everybody all these different voices it was good that all these voices were smart and if we had some dumb voices, that would have made the there movie. Were dumb voices, <laughs> no yeah. dumb like voices. Like if Trump had been working on this movie. That would have been a fascinating spin to it, for sure. I oh, can't boy. imagine what that would be like. <laughs> um, like. My question is also just in terms of just like creating this as a... I don't know what you want to call I hate to use the word dramedy, but there's a lot of comedy into this. What, a story that very easily could have skewed very dramatic. Um, what is it like trying to balance that sort of comedic undertone to it? Something to sort of keep it from being like, I don't know, like Million Dollar Baby or something like that, where Ooh. it's just like a super oh, heavy... Million Dollar it, Baby is one of the funniest movies of all time. Are you kidding me? When she <laughs> falls on the... <laughs> Last scene. It was definitely a twist. I'll give it that. Like. Well, I think what we realized... What we knew from the beginning we wanted this to be a comedy. We wanted it to be funny from the beginning. Um, and we knew, and we knew the challenge. <laughs> oh, you took it back from me. I had it. And then you took it back from me. Um... We knew the challenge was not going to be the drama, that the challenge was going to be the comedy. I mean, there's challenges to the drama, too. But I think what we learned was that the comedy actually buys you more leeway to go into more emotional stuff. So if you can, like, have something funny happen, that actually will sort of get you the audience's trust. So they'll go with you to deeper, more emotional places. So what we found in the editing of the movie and sort of showing it to people and working on it was that the comedy and the drama actually... Uh, accentuate each other. Uh, they actually, the drama makes the comedy funnier and the comedy makes the drama more emotional. But there was a lot, there, it's a, but it's a, it's, um, the math of it was, is hard because like you have to, you, you have to get the audience, you have, you, you're trying to, to give the audience permission to laugh at a situation that's not funny. Yeah. Um, but you're also, you can't go so far that you're um, that you're disregarding how serious the situation is. So you have to like be respectful of how serious it is, but at the same time, you have to give the audience permission to take a break to laugh. And so, the our job a lot of times was figuring out exactly how to calibrate that. So, as an example, well, I'm, you know, the, the you know, how do you get, you know, there's a long sequence in the movie where where well, I guess I won't say because this because I don't want to spoil. Sure, this yeah, this yeah. Would, be, would be a spoiler thing. But that's basically the game of the of 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 the second act of the movie is to give the audience a a, a window where they can laugh, but at the same time not forget how serious what's happening is. And how much of that sort of is involved with like you know the scripting of this, the editing? Because it feels like I mean 
probably both of them are very important, but I, I don't know if you have to repeatedly show, you know, test screens to see if it's like funny enough or dramatic enough, or if you just had a sense right off the bat of like, this is how we envision this being. And I think this will be pretty good at achieving. To me, oh, I'll say one other thing. Yeah, like, to, to me, a lot of it is in the script. Mm -hmm. The part that, the part that I'm talking about anyway, I mean, there's the performances and there's just the, the story itself, but a lot of it is actually in the script of mm. picking the right moments to s signal to the audience where we want this to go. And so the, the thing that I'm referring to is, is like getting them out of the hospital was mm -hmm. a very big thing for us. All of us. Yeah. Well, I'm like saying. including the actors, like, like, yeah, yeah. But I, I'm saying like yeah. a very big thing in the, of, in the scripting of it, which is key to the, to the movie working is there's a very long section of the movie where Kumail and Holly and Ray are not in a hospital. And we, and, and that's a very key moment in the whole movie. That's like a, the kind of heart and soul of the second act mm -hmm. of the movie, comedically, comedically. <laughs> how do you do that? How do you get, how do you, how do you get them out there in a way that doesn't like, what are they doing leaving the hospital? <laughs> like, what are these, you know what I mean? Where you're sure, not yeah. like, why are they leaving? And that's a tightrope that you walk because if you go too far in either direction, you you as the audience will say, wait, what's happening here? I don't believe that. Yeah, absolutely. Right. And so, and so that's a lot of that is in the, <coughs> is in the, is in the, uh, just is all about us sitting in, 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 in a room together and kind of going over it a thousand times of like, how do we, you know, what choices do we make in the beginning of the second act where, where the, the, where her illness sets in, what choices do we make? to buy ourselves the comedy that's coming and every single choice, what? <laughs> no, nothing, I'm listening to you. Are you making fun of me? I'm not We at just both saw ourselves in this mirror here. Are you here. admiring yourself no, in the mirror? No, not at all. Please don't. I think you look great. I've never seen that shirt before. I like it. Thank I you. bought it for him. It's new. It's, it's I really like it. It's good. Um, so there's all these choices that we make in the beginning that 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 as uh, that I you know that you that pay off later, become equity for la for later on. But that for me anyway was the entire challenge of this movie is how do you maintain that comic tone throughout the second act when something so unfunny and scary is happening. I mean, the big thing that we talked a lot about was how do you get them to go to a comedy show mm. when their daughter's in a coma? Like, how do you justify that? And so that was a lot of conversations with us, but then also conversations with Ray and Holly to make sure that everybody... As parents, because they're both parents. Yeah, yeah like, they like, I mean, you know, they they won't let you get away with anything like they when they're in a movie they have to make sure that every single thing makes sense so that was like we know we want them to end up at this comedy show because we think that would be good for many many reasons how do we get them out of the house in a way that is believable as mike was saying the believability the equity that then allows the rest of it to be funny well there's this, also this i don't know other element of its like authenticity like obviously you have sort of this vision of how you want to structure it but at the same time this is based on a true story, how much of it was sort of like, you wanted to be, I don't know, respectful to the actual story that you're telling, as well as trying to make this something that is an engaging thing and maybe not too personal, but also yeah. does contain that personal I think, aspect. And the, them going out, I think, also we were talking about it, it was such a thing of like, yeah, your life does have to kind of go on. So like, when I was sick, you guys were still going out to eat. You were like, because you had to, like you don't, the world still continues. And I think that's often kind of like a slap in the face too. Like just the idea that a comedy show would be happening while my daughter is sick. How could that even happen? But it's like, that is part of the world is that uh, one person can be sick and the rest of the world just kind of keeps moving. Um, so I think that was kind of, that was part of the realism we wanted to show uh, of those scenes. But a lot of it was um, keeping true to the basic events and then finding ways to kind of crank up the conflict or crank up the what could be funny about it or crank up what could be mostly conflict uh, with the characters. Yeah, because I think what we're all saying is... Um, Did your voice cut out for a second? <laughs> it, was like, it was weird. It's like you are yes. on a weird cell phone. Okay. I was buffering. Are you okay? Are the Wi-Fi is really bad. Yeah. <laughs> you were buffering. But, uh, <laughs> um, is in a movie like this, it really takes one thing to break the reality of it. If there's one thing that the characters do that doesn't make sense, that's clearly done for a joke or to be funny or something, 
that can really like the whole universe falls apart. So that's uh, that was the thing that we really talked. I mean, one of the things we, do you remember was as you were saying earlier, getting them out of the hospital because yeah. you were like, why wouldn't they just stay in the waiting room? And so literally we, getting them to leave to even go home. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah. We had an elaborate like <laughs> well, because my timing. Thing was, well, my thing was as a parent, you know, no way am I leaving that hospital. No way. I'm not even going into the waiting room. <laughs> I'm not even in the waiting room. I'm in the room. Um, <laughs> Sleeping in the bed with the person. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You know, and so, and then, you know, maybe another perspective, you know, so it's sort of like, go get something to, you know, like your daughter's in a coma. Go get a bite to eat. You go, go. It's like, <laughs> fuck you. No way. I'm, I'm, I'm going to go and I'll eat the chicken sandwich in, from the, from the, you know, the crappy machine, hospital yeah. gift store or whatever. And I'm going to sit in the room. This is movie stuff, you know, because like the, you know, it's not like, a good movie to just have a person be well, in the room. What, the whole well, time. What, what I mean is, is you're right, but but that like the move, like the, the reality is, they leave that first day. It's yeah. not even like they've been there for six days, and it's like okay, just leave for five minutes, and it's like yeah. okay, fine, because I think that's more what would be really happening is well, it would take a few days before you would, but it's like we didn't have time for that. We don't have time for that, so it's a. Is lot there a three-hour cut somewhere where we can? Oh my like god, there's probably oh, like seven-hour cut. cut. Yeah, but it's yeah. like, but but I mean, so it's like you you know you have to like. You know, my, my thing, and we all, the, the Emily and Kumail are, are, are so thorough, and to kind of answer your question in another way, it's like they were never precious about, I mean, they, they were going through the motions of being writers who were writing a movie about their true story, and there's a, there's a process of, of <laughs> separation that happens there, but like they were very game for that process, and so, um, but, but what we did is we sort of talked through every scenario. You know, we walked down every single avenue and left no stone unturned as to like, so that we, so that we knew at any given moment we had, we had talked through every choice and landed at, at what, what felt right. Mm -hmm. And it was a lot of different people feeling empowered to like say what they thought. And, and, and so this is an example of that where we were able to kind of hash it out and be like, well, I don't think they'd leave. Well, I do. And, da, 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 da. and that kind of got us to, to, to the end result in a way that worked, in a way that worked for everybody. Yeah. And we really had like we had specific like the hospital has these visiting hours and you can't <laughs> be that. here. So and we shot all that. And then when you see it in the edit, you realize like, oh, it's. You don't really need that mm. stuff as much. But we talked but about But I'm glad it's there. I'm, I'm glad, glad it's, it's there. there. Me too. And also that thing of like, when is it day? When is it night? How many days is she in the coma? So we know how many days she's in the coma. But in the movie, it's a little, it's, it's a little, it's a little sort of abstract. You know she's in there a while. And that was also a decision we made to like not know how long she's in there. So that feel kind of vague and amorphous. Yeah. That, so we yeah. wanted her to feel like that. But in, in the scripting of it, we knew exactly how many days it was and what happens what day and all that stuff. Very cool. So the film is The Big Sick. It's opening Sif tonight. And uh, it's going wide, or it's released uh, uh, July 14th. 14th yeah, July, June 23rd, Select Cities. Okay. And any specific place people should go to? The movie for, theater. Well, I mean, is there a website or anything oh. that they can find more information? <laughs> uh, think, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yes, in general, we do want them to go to the movie theater for the moment. Bigsickmovie.com? Yeah, I'll find out right now. Okay. Emily, talk about something interesting. Oh, my gosh. So many interesting things about the bigsickmovie.com. We have a Twitter. Weirdly, we have a Twitter account and an Instagram account, and we don't know who runs any of them. The, the big big movie.com. Perfect. Yes. Awesome. Well, thank you guys so much for doing this. Wish you the best of luck with thank the film. You. And it's, it's excellent. So anyone who gets the chance to see it, absolutely should. Oh, great. And we there's, agree. A, there's a trailer. Watch the trailer. Yes, on the trailer is excellent as well. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you very much. Stop me. I'm on fire tonight. Magneto can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. Even Zod can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. Even Zod can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. The Wrath of Khan can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. The board can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. Because I've got